Aboriginal peoples and their ancestors used their knowledge and skill to survive on one of the driest continents on earth to provide them with water, food and shelter over thousands of years. Here we are today, less than 200 years since European settlement, witnessing the collapse of ecosystems in the last remnants of West Australia's unique ancient Jarrah forest. This is just the tip of the iceberg as climate change demonstrates its force. There is no dispute that we're in the midst of climate change, while the science is conclusive that deforestation is one of the main contributors and Australia being noted as a leading perpetrator, with the state of West Australia having a history for the most extensive land clearing of native vegetation on the continent and the unenviable record of species extinction in the world. In 1901, the Woods and Forest Mapping Report classified forests by type. These included Jarra, Kari, Chewit, Mary, Wandu and Yorkgum, the total of which came to 8.5 million hectares. This equates to just over 3% of West Australia's landmass. Since the arrival of Europeans, most of West Australia's native forest has been logged and cleared for agriculture, urban sprawl, industrial development and extractive industries. By 2011, only 1,795,000 hectares of native forest remain, which equates to approximately 20% of pre-European forest, and of that, less than half is in conservation reserves, which includes heathland, wetlands, granite outcrops, sand dunes and gravel pits, whilst the remainder is still up for logging. West Australia is considered to be one of the planet's few biodiversity hotspots, hosting unique and diverse flora and fauna species, not to mention invertebrates, along with a plethora of organisms, all of which are largely unknown. But this is all changing, and far too rapidly, as what we are now experiencing in the southwest of West Australia is the unprecedented rate of extinction of native species, along with the destruction of their habitat, resulting in environmental collapse. Two of the main contributing factors are the logging and frequent wholesale burning of our native forest ecosystems. Let us begin with early settlement, when loggers mainly used broad axes and cross-cut saws to cut down giant trees. Even in the early 1800s, it was evident that the removal of native vegetation had a profound effect on the climate. When papers written and published by the father of Australia's geology, Reverend William Clark, who stated, and I quote, it is the forest which actively ministers the climatic conditions of the earth, which extricated by the axe or restored by planting, changes both the face of nature and the distribution and destinies of human life. In the late 1950s and early 60s, the chainsaw came into being. This is when intensive logging really altered structure and biodiversity of our native forest ecosystems during which time the logging industry's insatiable greed and unrestricted access managed to reduce the integrity of our virgin forests to nothing more than a weed-infested gravesite, leaving behind a monoculture of even-aged trees with massive stockpiles of logs and waste left to rot and burn. In the mid-1990s, the logging industry introduced 30-ton logging machines, a one-man operation which can traverse any terrain. And whilst doing so, they not only log trees, they crush and kill every living creature and organism beneath them. And what may survive face a totally altered landscape, which will never be the same, exposing them to loss of food, water, shelter, 
predators, disease, weed infestation, soil erosion, soil compaction, along with increased soil temperatures from solar radiation. This creates a drier and more flammable environment. The irreversible annihilation of West Australia's native forest is not unlike that of Malaysian state Sarawak and just takes a matter of hours. Western Australia's unique native forest ecosystems have no chance of protection or preservation. As over the decades, the logging industry, along with multinational corporations and their unhealthy connection with government, have built up a large bureaucracy to ensure that there is no impediment to the rape and pillage of our native forests. There are four government agencies set up as environmental watchdogs, giving the public a false sense that their native forests and water catchments are protected and managed in the best interest of the environment. Those agencies include the Department of Environment and Conservation, the Environmental Protection Authority, the Conservation Commission and the Department of Water. Not one of these agencies deals specifically or act responsibly without extreme community pressure in genuinely protecting, creating or making recommendations to preserve our water source or enlarge our forest conservation estate. What we are witnessing is that these government agencies are all in some way compromised as they are stacked with bureaucrats who have or had a vested interest in native logging and other extractive industries while being privy to sensitive information. This gives cause to seriously question their true conservation agenda. Research at the Australian National University in 2006 found that one hectare of mature eucalyptus trees stored approximately 1,500 tonnes of CO2 per annum, which is the equivalent of taking 1,300 cars off the road. Forests that are logged store approximately 40% less carbon than if they were left undisturbed. This would mean that the remaining 800,000 hectares of West Australia's native forest, currently up for logging, would, if left standing, store approximately 44 billion tonnes of CO2. If we stop logging our native forests today, and instead recognise them as nature's carbon sink, this would provide an immediate solution in reducing the amount of CO2 being released into the atmosphere, something a carbon tax will never achieve. Meanwhile, local communities, scientists and environmentalists have been voicing their concerns for decades as the native forest logging juggernaut continues without checks and balances, without responsibility or accountability, destroy the very last of our remaining unique forest ecosystems, while sending one of the planet's few biodiversity hotspots plummeting head-on into environmental collapse. With the growth of the world's population ever increasing, creating an even greater strain on our already limited natural resources in providing us with clean air, fresh water, healthy soils, the most basic and essential needs for our survival, and all of which contribute in achieving and maintaining quality of health so that we and future generations may experience an enriched and productive lifestyle. Common sense tells us that the protection and restoration of native vegetation is critical in mitigating climate change. And for this to be possible, there must be an end to all logging in our native forests. Thank you.